We're back at the Hartford InsureTech Symposium uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, so it's uh, very fitting. Who am I speaking with? Josh Hollander. And who are you with? Horton International. And what does Horton International do? So uh, we're a retained executive search firm. Uh, we have a few different industries that we focus on, but we have a specialization in insure tech and insurance. So uh, given the talent gap that's occurring in insurance, my guess is that you're probably pretty busy. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of activity in the space, and uh, you know we made a decision to uh, pursue the insure tech and the insurance sector a couple of years back when we saw some of the activity here in Hartford and more broadly in the space. And so, you know, we've been fortunate in that we've had some accelerators and other activity that have given us access and the opportunity to do some mentoring and participate with some of the companies who are trying to make some change in the industry. Yeah. What did you see? What did you, you know, when you were, you kind of viewed uh, the Hartford area and what was happening, what was happening with insurance, what were some of the things that you saw that said, there's probably going to be a need not just for like traditional talent but like significant talent um, science technology engineering uh, management leadership in insurance what are some of the things that you saw that said this is there's something interesting going on here well uh, you know Hartford's had a, a great history of innovation you know many people might know it's one of three aerospace hubs in the world so you know it's not just the insurance sector and even though you know Hartford uh, for many years has been known as the insurance capital of the world there's you know a lot of innovation in life science and so uh, we're fortunate to have a state with a tremendous number of you know universities that produce very well educated people and uh, we've had uh, a number of successful corporations that have helped develop that talent and retain it in the area for many years um, you know I think the world in general is going through digital transformation mm -hmm. and so uh, because there is such a concentration of insurance talent here uh, we're seeing the impact of that and then as I mentioned previously with uh, Startup Bootcamp and what they've done with the Hartford InsureTech Hub uh, first and now several of the other initiatives in the space uh, you know we've been able to bring uh, new businesses from all around the world and, and see the types of ideas that creative people have for how they can make some change in the space. Yeah, so the digital transformation is causing um, a bit of a disruption in talent management when it comes to, uh, specifically, we'll, we'll stick with insurance because that's what we do best, yep. but um, you know, there, I think a lot of the companies in the insurance ecosystem are used to hiring a certain uh, style of employee, a uh, certain caliber, and that's kind of been flipped around a little bit because of this digital transformation. Can you talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of different things that you could unpack there, but, you know, at, at its highest level, I think, again, uh, you know, every role, and, and in particular, if you talk about leadership roles, you know, every role, in my opinion, is a digital leadership role today. And so, certainly there's a place for innovation groups, and from a technology perspective for many years, um, you know, digital transformation to some extent, or just process improvements through technology have taken place. But across the org chart, regardless of function, um, everyone in a leadership role or who aspires to a leadership role needs digital skills. Yeah. So if, uh, if we're talking to someone in HR or hiring manager, um, they're probably feeling this pinch, right? Um, what sort of recommendation, like what, what, what do they have to do to transition to a world where they're going to have to recruit from a wider pool but a more specialized pool as well, both. They have to get deeper and broader at the same time. Um, what sorts of things should they be looking for or at to kind of guide that? Yeah, well, I think a lot is about engagement now. And so just in the same way as carriers in the space um, 
and, and brokers and other folks are exploring new distribution channels. I think in the same way, uh, uh, folks in HR and talent management, as well as folks uh, in, in businesses like Horton International, uh, need to understand how people want to be communicated with, how they'd like to receive information, um, and also recognize the fact that in this sort of world of information overload, that um, messaging has to be really engaging. And so you've got to find the hook that's going to get someone's attention and bring them into a, yeah. to a process yeah. and uh, give them the impression that your organization, your brand, is something that they're going to find attractive and want to learn more about. Yeah. I, I'm curious as to um, how many of the positions that you have to fill are not necessarily new positions, but positions that have already existed for in some time span, right, where uh, they've hired someone, but it didn't, didn't work, it didn't fit, and so now they're just, they, they're like, we need to look another way. Do you know, like, roughly how many are, like, existing positions versus brand new ones? Yeah, so, you know, we do work with companies ranging from, you know, a top five carrier in the life insurance space to... Uh, one of the companies at, at this event, which has raised a few million dollars in venture capital, and uh, you know has a has a small team and is looking to grow. Uh, majority of the organizations that we work with are high growth organizations, mm -hmm. and so we see a lot of new roles. But um, what I will say is, uh, with a lot of growth companies. Um, because of the pace at which they're looking to hire, because they don't have uh, internal talent acquisition teams maybe uh, formally set up, um, because they're trying to save money, quite frankly, in leverage networks, uh, oftentimes uh, they'll try to uh, sometimes fit square pegs in round holes. And, one of my favorite sayings. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and so uh, that can often be a situation where um, either they're struggling because they've used those channels to try to try to fill and not having success, or they have hired someone in the role, but it hasn't worked, and so they ask us uh, to come in and uh, try to find someone who's a perfect fit and is going to uh, really drive outsized growth for their organization. Yeah. So yeah. So essentially, it, it's not just about carriers struggling. These are also tech firms. Yeah. That are struggling as well. So you would you would think uh, tech companies kind of have it. All buttoned up. These are digital companies, and but even they struggle with uh, finding the right developers or even finding the um, insurance expertise. Correct? Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, there, there's a, a developer role that we've worked on recently where. Um, there's eight open positions in the U.S. for every one qualified developer uh, in that in that role in the U.S. So obviously that creates inherent challenges whether you're at a startup or whether you're at a large organization. Um, but but it, it, it's interesting because you know I'm sort of flipping it back a little bit uh, to the carrier side. But um, there's another organization we work with where. Uh, They've created some new roles uh, driven out of a data science effort and their innovative roles. Um, and the sort of comp structure that you need for those roles is very different than what they've dealt with historically. They're not just competing with other insurance companies. Correct. They're competing with tech companies, engineering firms, science firms. Like these are exactly. well sought after talent. Exactly. And so. Um, you know, ideally, you're working with a partner who can uh, have a good perspective on, on you know, what the competition is, not just narrowly but broadly, and uh, if necessary, can provide some advice on how you structure these things. Um, and, and these aren't simple deals. No, no. I mean, uh, if you're looking for talent that's looking to drive growth and drive innovation. Uh, they um, first and foremost ideally you're hiring because they believe in the mission and um, they're going to drive that but uh, you know people need to make a living and in, in certain roles you know competition uh, I'm sorry uh, compensation uh, should be tied to performance and, and they would like to be able to feel like if I um, am able uh, to deliver outsized performance and, and help the organization significantly, then I'd like to um, be able to participate in the financial upside of the organization as well. Yeah. How, uh, what have you seen, like how, how hard is it to communicate 
the value prop for insurance to these professionals. They have a lot of options. Right. Insurance has a stereotype. So how do you, working with one of these firms, overcome the stereotypes to get them to consider insurance as a legitimate uh, landing place? Sure. Well, I, I think there's, uh, first of all, there's the reason insurance was created, which is a you know a social and a communal benefit. Yeah. So if you want to... They do, don't always understand that. Right. Yeah. But, you know, in today's world, I think, uh, particularly as you look at younger generations, they want to know that who they're working for it mm-hmm. has a positive social impact mm-hmm. and so the chance to work with an organization that fundamentally is about that um, and you know management of risk protection of risk uh, and things like that uh, you know a lot of people never have thought of it that way no okay and so getting that message out um, you can certainly use as an analogy sort of uh, we do work in fintech as well mm-hmm. and I personally have a background in fintech prior to getting into search so, you know, if you sort of rewind the clock 10 to 20 years, um, you can see the transformation that's gone on broadly in that space, and you can kind of paint a picture for what's coming uh, in the insurance sector uh, through InsurTech. So I think that can create excitement. Um, and then after that, it gets into, you know, there's sort of four key elements. It's, it's uh, uh, sort of what's the opportunity with the company? So, you know, what is the company trying to do within the sector? And then... What are the specifics of the role? So how can I have impact in the role? And then who am I working with? So who am I reporting to? What can I learn from that person? And then ultimately, you know, what's the career development opportunity? So if I have a vision for where I'd like to go in my career, how can this role potentially help me get there? Or, you know, as an eye-opener, how can this role potentially get me somewhere I yeah. never even thought of? How, how often do you, um, let me phrase it, like handhold a carrier in terms of, you know, okay, you have this role, you want to fill it, you, um, you're you going to need to change a lot of the culture within your organization. Uh, how often do you need to have that conversation? I, I think that uh, probably by the time they've decided to work with us, they've made a lot of those yeah. choices already. So then it becomes more about the specifics of... Um, who's the hiring manager, who's the specific team we're working with, really making sure we understand uh, their vision and then get into those you know, four key areas so that yeah. we can articulate the message out to the marketplace and be able to engage the talent that they want to bring in yeah. and have the opportunity to access. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe the most important question of them all, you live locally in Hartford. Um, I do. Yankees or Red Sox? <laughs> I'm Red Sox, so I'm a little little bit of a hybrid. So you can hear the applause here. Uh, Har- Harford's pretty much the line yeah, it is. here. So it if is. you're on the wrong side of the tracks, you're a Yankees fan. So yeah. So interestingly, for most of my life growing up, we didn't have cable TV, and the one the one television station that came in was the one that showed the New York Giants. So I ended up a Giants fan. <laughs> oh. But otherwise, uh, I'm all Boston sports. So. What a combination! Yeah. Exactly. How many? If you, you, if you uh, try to find the probability that a human being would be a New York football Giants fan and a Boston Red Sox fan, it might be a population of one <laughs> here. Around here, there's probably a couple others, but yeah. So, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, well, you're now an official member of the Insurance Nerds family. Awesome. So we're thank you proudly. So much. I will. And thank you. And we, we, have, we have time to convert you to a Pats fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a rough one last weekend. It was. Thanks. Stop. Stop.